Welcome to CTV's Capital Dispatch with Rachel Aiello. Hey, so three big things happened on Parliament Hill this week to kick us off. First, the long-awaited Foreign Influence Foreign Agent Registry has been presented. On Monday, Public Safety and Democratic Institutions Minister Dominic LeBlanc presented what's going to be called Bill C-70. This is a sweeping piece of foreign interference focused legislation. Within this bill is this long called for foreign agent registry. Essentially, what the government is proposing here is to set up some new publicly available uh, transparency mechanism where any foreign agent, foreign state, foreign actor who is seeking to influence Canadian affairs. We're talking about pu public policy, federal elections, nomination races, have to register through this new foreign agent registry. The government has been pushed to do this because of concerns about not having a clear sense of who is seeking to bend the ears of elected officials in this country. Now we're talking about influence here, not the word interference, but these are obviously tied up closely together. Advocates have said that having some sort of publicly available registry will help protect uh, diaspora communities in Canada who are able to then go and reference and see uh, who on behalf of foreign governments are acting, trying to sway public policy in this country. Now, there's some caveats to this. This means that uh, properly accredited diplomats would be exempt. You know, there is diplomatic work done by all governments trying to uh, have representation in various countries. Uh, as well, there are some tough penalties. So if uh, in the most extreme cases, a foreign state or entity was found to have not registered or acted improperly, we're talking about uh, massive fines, I think $5 million and potentially five years in jail. So that is one measure in this bill, but there's also a series of other new powers for CSIS, new foreign interference offenses, criminal code changes uh, around certain other offenses related to foreign interference. All of this, the government says, is supposed to help better shore up uh, and update some of Canada's laws to catch up with the ever-evolving threat in the largely online space. Uh, the big thing to note here as this goes through the House, the government is not able to say yet when these measures would be in effect. On the Foreign Agent Registry, we're looking at probably a year after the bill passes before it actually becomes a reality which then leaves the question open as to how much of this could actually be in effect by the next campaign. So we'll have to kind of watch how that plays out. As well, we're talking about this week, the uh, abortion debate was back in full force. Every year, there's a group called March for Life that comes to Parliament Hill and protests calling on the government to set up more protections for the, quote, pre-born. And every year, this turns into a wedged political fight on the Hill. This year, what really lit up the Liberals and the NDP in challenging Conservative leader Pierre Polyev on his party's position on abortion were two things. One, earlier this week, a Conservative MP rose in the House and presented a petition suggesting or calling on the government to uh, enact more protections for, quote, the pre-born. Uh, largely, this has been viewed as an anti-abortion petition. Now, petitions don't have much teeth. The specific mechanism isn't really going to change anything. Uh, but Using that kind of as the leverage, what we saw was then the Liberals and the NDP pointing to Conservative leader Pierre Polyev's comments on the notwithstanding clause, which we talked about in our last episode. This was where Polyev said, uh, basically, wink, wink, nudge, nudge to police organizations. I will use whatever powers I have to make sure my laws are constitutional, uh, which would be read between the lines, would be referring to the notwithstanding clause. And the, the progressive parties in the House really questioned this week, is this a slippery slope? You know, he's saying he's only going to use this to, to hit on criminal justice matters. Uh, but is he considering using the notwithstanding clause to roll back other rights and freedoms? And so what we heard from Polly F today, essentially trying to, or this week, trying to shut this down, his office says, as he has said before, a conservative-led government under Pierre Polyev will not legislate on abortion and would not use the notwithstanding clause when it comes to matters of abortion. So this is kind of like a perennial issue on the Hill every time uh, one of these March for Life protests comes up or some sort of other issue about abortion rights in this country. It's used as a wedge. Polyev actually, back in the leadership, made it clear that him and his wife are pro-choice. So they're looking to kind of squash this, chalking this all up to uh, a desperate liberal party. 
Uh, nonetheless, it was another round of this debate and worth noting for the next time it happens on the Hill, which is uh, frankly inevitable. Um, lastly, the other little thing that happened on the Hill that I wanted to note, Freeland this week got a letter from a bunch of business organizations calling on her to rethink that capital gains change. They're saying this is short-sighted, it's sowing division, it's going to impact productivity. This is a push that we've been seeing from doctors previously, other entrepreneurs worried about this increase to the capital gains exemption will have knock-on effects for economic growth. I talked to Freeland's office this week. They are adamant that this was a well-thought-out policy, specifically targeted and deliberate, looking at the wealthiest Canadians, those who are making more than $250,000 in profit on the sale of an investment like a secondary property or a business. So they're sticking by this. I'm told that this piece of legislation enacting this capital gains change is coming soon. Uh, so I'll be watching for that as well. The Trudeau Liberal government better prepare itself for a summer of discontent. Workers are incredibly frustrated and outraged, and they'll be taking to the streets and their workplaces in concerted, coordinated actions across the country. Federal public sector workers just want to deliver the best possible service to Canadians. So that is Chris Aylward, who represents one of the biggest public service unions in the country this week speaking about unions plans to push back at a new uh, in-office policy. So it was recently announced that federal public servants are going to have to be going into the office instead of working from home three days a week starting in the fall. More senior members of management are going to have to be going in four days a week. And in this press conference, the unions outlined their plans to fight this. And it was largely emotionally charged. There was a lot of big language in this press conference, but this specific line has kind of been the one that everyone's hooked on to and repeated this week, prepare for a summer of discontent. So I picked this as my quote of the week because it's going to be an evolving story here. What he is threatening essentially is that unions are looking at ways to make this summer miserable for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. They're suggesting there could be holdups at airports, holdups at borders, trying to fight back at what they say is an unfair change to the way public servants report to the office. Now, this is quite an interesting story. I'm curious your thoughts on uh, the pushback here from public servants having to go back into the office a bit more. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here in my office every day, uh, so take that for what you will. I just think this was a quite a fiery quote. Uh, Mr. Aylward is the one to give them often, uh, but this was a press conference this week that if you missed would actually be worth going back and checking out in full. And we've got that on ctvnews.ca. As for what I'm watching next week, it is the last break week of the spring sitting, which means when MPs come back later in May, they are sitting for up to five weeks straight. So that is what we call silly season. Things really get heated. But next week, meanwhile, uh, a key deadline is coming up for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. You'll remember back in April, MPs passed a motion calling on the Prime Minister to call an emergency conference with the Premiers to talk about the carbon tax. This motion asked for him to have this televised meeting within five weeks to talk about the pollution pricing program. Now, this motion is non-binding. The Prime Minister doesn't actually have to meet this deadline, but if he was going to, the deadline is next Wednesday. So far, we haven't heard any plans for the Prime Minister to convene Canada's Premiers to talk about this policy. Uh, so I just wanted to note, I'm sure we'll see some at least snark uh, from the Conservative Party pointing out that the Prime Minister is likely to miss this deadline. The Prime Minister has said, you know, when we brought this policy into place, we did talk to Premiers, we did have conversations about this, and he continues to go down the line of, if provinces and territories have an issue with the policy, they're more than welcome to suggest a version of pollution pricing of their own. So just a little note, that carbon tax story is still kind of simmering in the background, and that's what I'm going to be keeping an eye on next week.